how can we set it up so we can play three or four players on this arcade? Hello and welcome to FilmsByChris.com. I've been talking about my new arcade system and the modifications I've made to it in previous videos. Today I'm going to continue talking about a few of the modifications I made since the last video. And then we're going to talk about player three and four controllers. We're going to have some fun adding those to a big screen. You'll see what I mean in a little bit, but first, the changes I made since the last video. In the last video I talked about how I pulled out all the insides and set it up so I can hook up any computer. Right now I have a Raspberry Pi hooked up, and I had to get a board that allowed me to hook it to the screen of the controller, of the arcade. And that controller board uh, has a headphone output, so I have HDMI going in and the audio coming out the head foot, and it didn't really have enough power to power the speakers that came with the arcade system. Since then I have found out that the board does have speaker output, but to use it I would have had to splice some wires and then as far as volume control I would have only been able to change the volume in software because it would have just been, there would have been no knob. So what I ended up doing was just going the route of buying an amplifier for under $20 that had 8th inch jacks and now I have that hanging from the back of the arcade. I can reach back there and turn the knob to adjust the volume. I may at some point in the future run that so it's right underneath the controller so I can reach it while I'm sitting there. But for now it's just hanging out the back. Another thing I did was I just added an LED strip to the back of the arcade. I used an ESP8266 to power that with WLED, which is an open source project that allows you to control your LEDs and give it a bunch of different patterns, all from your phone, mobile device, or desktop computer right in the web browser. And the great thing about this is not only does it give you a lot of control over it, but if I was to set up other LEDs in my house, which I do have extra LEDs from this strip, and I always have extra ESP8266s, 826s, 826s, 6-6s six lying around, uh, I could hook up more around this room and they can synchronize through my Wi-Fi. So that's what I'm doing right now with that. One thing I haven't done yet is, yeah, I need to set up power to the marquee. I could buy an adapter, but I have a whole bin of power adapters out in my garage. As far as I can tell reading online, this is a 12 volt light. So hopefully I'll be able to splice some wires, hook up some barrel jacks, and not have to spend 15 or 20 bucks on a new power adapter, because I already have one. So I haven't done that yet, but now the fun part. My arcade has two controllers for player one and player two, but some of the games I like to play, Ninja Turtles or X-Men as an example, are four player games, and there's some that are three player games, like Rampage. How can we set it up so we can play three or four players on this arcade? I already bought an HDMI splitter for $15 off Amazon, which allows to send the video and audio signal to two devices, the arcade and my big screen TV here. Well, this is going to be great because sometimes I throw Street Fighter tournaments, and so while two people could be playing, two other people or whoever else is at the party could be watching the game. But if I take another controller, now I can have people playing two at the arcade and two watching on the TV, so not everyone has to be crowded around the same arcade. So my original idea was to build a pedestal to put this arcade controller on, but since then I bought a new couch which has this nice ottoman here. So the plan is to gut these controllers, put in my own controllers with the USB cable coming out that can go to the arcade, and then all I have to do is bring this over, drop it down here, and two people could sit on the couch and play. It's not something that's going to happen every day, but again there's certain situations where I might want four players. Now why don't I just use these controllers as is. This is the original controller from my original arcade. And instead of building a controller like I do nowadays, I bought this from X Arcade, which still exists even though I bought this almost 20 years ago. It's very heavy duty, great device. Again, I bought it almost 20 years ago, so the way it came is it has this serial port on the back and a PS2 port on the back, and what would happen is you would plug this into your computer and it would act as a keyboard and you can program these in different ways for different emulators. The problem is, even though this is heavy duty, my old arcade, the reason I had to get rid of it, was because I let it, let it sit outside for almost 10 years. And the humidity here in Florida got to it, and the buttons became unresponsive. In fact, this one's stuck down. So, what I'm going to do is, again, open it up, gut all these, I already have light up keyboard, or buttons and joysticks, so I'm just gonna replace that. I'm going to then, pull out the controls here and just run the USB out of this and then anytime I want all I have to do is pull this controller out and plop it down wherever I want and people can play. Now I'm going to be using the same USB game controller boards that I've been using in all my devices but while I was looking the other day I actually found very similar devices that did have wireless capabilities. That sounds like 
it could cause issues. I, whenever I can go wired, I do. So it's not gonna be a big deal. I'll have a USB cable running over here. But again, it's only gonna be out when we need three or four players. So it's not gonna be all the time, but I think USB is gonna be more reliable. So let's go ahead. Hopefully I'll be able to open this thing up real easy. The only screw holes I'm seeing are on the feet. It looks like there's, I think, six of them. I'm hoping to pop that out and just pull out all that stuff in there and just replace it with the light up buttons. I got multiple colors, so I'm probably gonna do uh, red and blue because it's my favorite, but then some of the alternate buttons on the sides and back, I might use yellow or green. Let's go ahead and hop right into that. So far, so good. One little catch though. The area that's cut away for the old joysticks, my new joysticks are a little bit taller and thinner. Uh, I'm not too worried about where the screws are, but I need to cut away a little bit of this wood, like maybe a quarter of an inch to fit the new joystick in. So let's go do that. Well, after some horrible failed attempts to cut out that extra area, I decided I don't need to cut that out. I just got some scrap wood, cut a hole in it, and now I just glue that in there and the joystick will fit in and screw into that. Just hopefully I secure it enough. So I'll just use some wood glue. That's the route I'm going. So something I find important when it comes to these joystick controllers is putting them in the proper way. You can always remap it if you put it in the wrong way, but then you have to remap it for every game. And the paperwork it comes with doesn't tell you which way is up, left, right, and down. Uh, so I put this in, I plugged it into my computer, and I tested it, and I wrote where up is so I don't get confused. Uh, but if you get one of these, at least if you get the same ones as me, when you're facing the controller this way, the plug is on the right side. So this, it goes long way up and down, and then the plug for the ribbon cable is on the right when you're facing it. But remember, when, you, when you're inside putting it in, it's on the left, it could get confusing. Uh, so yeah, that is noted, and let's continue. <laughs> Hey! Okay, I got the joysticks in. They're a bit of more of a pain of butt than I thought they were going to be. Um, so someone, as somebody who has made a number of game controllers in the past, I can tell you right now, even though these joysticks are not pressure sensitive, they're just like pressing a button, and you can tell people that, that hitting it harder doesn't affect the gameplay, because it's just a button click, people will still whack these things as hard as they can when they're playing. It's like their life depends on hitting this thing as hard as they can. And I have had where uh, I put in little screws and those have popped out. So in the past, uh, since then, what I do is I put bolts all the way through, or and then nut them down. And uh, that was my goal with this. So I figured doing two big bolts on each one uh, would be better than four little screws. Well, I, just, I drilled the holes, I put the bolts through, and then I went to put on the wing nuts and I didn't have room to get them on there because of the way the controller's designed. So I left those in there, otherwise there'd just be holes in the controller. They also helped me though line up the joysticks as I put screws in four corners. And you know what, they, they will still, they're still pressing against the side, so I think it gave a little bit of support. I'm not 100% confident with the little screws I put in here. I may have to come back here in the future and strap these down somehow, but I've come up here, I've whacked these things around, and they seem to be holding in, so fingers crossed. But the thing about doing stuff like this yourself is, if something goes wrong, you can fix it in the future because you know how it works. Well, let's get the buttons put in. Okay, we've got our controller with all the buttons installed. Oh, well, they're put in. I still need to wire it up to the controller board. But real quick, I want to explain there are some extra buttons on this because of how the arcade or the um, X arcade controller is set up. Again, I bought this 20 years ago. And originally, okay, so I think I said this wrong earlier in the video. It had a PS2, as in a, you know, a keyboard connection, not like a PlayStation 2 uh, connection. So you hook a keyboard into it, and then it had a serial out 
if I remember correctly, which then could have an adapter to plug into the keyboard of your computer. And what would happen is there's a button on the back you would press and then you press a button here and then you press a key on your keyboard and it would program that button to that key and then it had a switch for five different settings so you could save five different settings. It was really cool for at the time and then eventually got to a point where computers didn't have those old keyboard ports anymore and so I had to get a, uh, an adapter to uh, connect it to USB. But I am going to utilize those holes. It also has buttons on the side, which on my arcade cabinet I couldn't access because of the way I designed the cabinet. But they were meant if you're playing a pinball game, you can, you know, play pinball like this. So I, I did blue for player one or three, and red for player uh, two or four, depending on whether I'm hooking this up to the arcade or not. Uh, then I put a button on the back here just because there was a spot. Uh, if I didn't already have buttons set up for save state on the arcade, I could set this up to save state. And then of course I got the buttons on the side in case I ever do play a digital pinball game. Uh, but I just wanted to point out that's why we have those extra buttons. I'm using uh, the green and the yellow. So I have all these different colors. It's going to look great at night. Let me go ahead and wire up the controller board. And we're all wired up! And uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. I've gone over it in previous videos. Depending on the set you get, it may vary, but for the most part, if you get these light up uh, joysticks, and not light up joysticks, but the light up buttons, they do make light up joysticks too though, uh, each button has three wires coming from it. If you get one that doesn't light up, then it's usually only gonna have two. Uh, and on the board, they're labeled. Uh, uh, K1, K2 for key 1, key 2, uh, they have L and R1 and 2 and start and select. The joysticks have 5 pin wire, it's the only 5 pin wire on the board so that's pretty easy to get. Now as far as putting the buttons in the proper order, is that important? Depends on what you're doing. I try to at least first, I start off with uh, button 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 just so I don't have to remap those for fighting games. Uh, but you know there's a good chance you're going to have to remap anyway and again if you're using an emulator you can remap them to anything, and depending on how it detects the controllers and what order it detects them, it might recognize player two is player one and player one is player two. Uh, of course, you can change that in your system settings. But if you're gonna use this on a system, uh, for example, I don't have any console systems, but I believe things like Xboxes, you can plug in regular game controllers. So if you can plug in a USB game controller into an Xbox, you could use this, and in that case you want to make sure you wire up your start button to the start pin and your select button to the select pins, but it's labeled right on the board. So just read what the board says. You're going to have extra pins, uh, I'm assuming these for extra buttons if you have the two pin ones, so if you have other buttons that aren't light up, you can probably plug into there. And you got three 5 volts on there to power other devices, which I do have a game controller I made my daughter years ago that also had an ESP chip in it that displayed stuff on a little display and I powered that off the 5 volts that come out of this board so I didn't have to do an extra power supply. But I'm all set. The wires are just coming out of the hole in the back here. I have no stars, so the only thing I have to really be careful of is that I don't pull these wires out. But the boards, I just velcroed them down, so if I did do that, it would just pop them off and they'd be hanging in there. Uh, before I put the back back on, I'm going to test all the buttons and make sure that I have everything hooked up right. And then it's just a matter of putting it on the back, plug it into the arcade. So let's do that. So, now, if I have two players playing on a four player game and someone comes along and wants to play, I just hand them this controller and they can walk right over here to the couch. Sit down and I can have two more players playing on the big screen TV, but playing the same game. That's it. Now, I used an old X arcade controller to put these parts in, but you just need some wood and some tools and you can make this yourself out of anything. But also remember, if you have an arcade cabinet and you've modded it to run any machine, you plug in any game controllers. So even though I have player one, player two, I could grab any game controller that's USB, like this one here, and I can set this up as player three or four, so two people can be on either side and they can all use the cabinet. What's nice about this with the HDMI splitter and this extra controller is that we're not all crammed around the same cabinet. That's it. Thank you for watching. Films by Chris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. Also check out my Patreon page. Links in the description to that as well, as well as links on my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. Again, link in the description. Thank you for watching, as always, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.